Hello and welcome to Lamplighter. Today is September 1. Today, as we continue in our daily Bible reading, we continue to read the prophecies of Ezekiel. But now we're going to be reminded that Jerusalem has fallen, the people of Judah have been carried into Babylonian exile, and this section of our reading in the Bible are going to be readings about Ezekiel's restoration prophecies. So now there's been some 20 years that have passed since the beginning of the exile, and there are still 50 years to go of this exile, according to the prophecies of Jeremiah that have already been made. So Ezekiel here is changing his focus, not talking anymore about the captivity, but he's changing his focus to comfort the scattered people and this people who feel rather defeated by God. So as we begin the reading today, we're reminded of the announcement of the fall of Jerusalem in this way. In the 12th year of our exile, in the 10th month, on the fifth day, a man who had escaped from Jerusalem came to me and said, the city has fallen. So my mouth was opened and I was no longer silent, Ezekiel writes. Now we're told the reason why all of these things have happened. Remember, we've been reminded all the way through the captivity that all of this is happening because of Judah's sin. And we see that here yet again. Then the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, the people living in those ruins in the land of Israel are saying, Abraham was only one man, yet he possessed the land, but we are many. Surely the land has been given to us as our possession. Therefore say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, since you eat meat with the blood still in it and look to your idols and shed blood, then should you possess the land? You rely on your sword. You do detestable things and each of you defiles his neighbor's wife. Should you then possess this land? In other words, why should you think that you should possess the land whenever you're still acting in disobedience against the God who gave you the land? And this is what God says, As surely as I live, those who are left in the ruins will fall by the sword. Those out in the country I will give to the wild animals to be devoured. And those in strongholds and caves will die of a plague. I will make the land a desolate waste. Then they will know that I am the Lord when I have made the land a desolate waste of all the detestable things they have done. That is God again reminding the people who is in control. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Notice how many times throughout our readings we've seen that expression. My people come to you as they usually do and sit before you to listen to your words, God says to Ezekiel but they do not put them into practice. With their mouths, they express devotion, but their hearts are greedy for unjust gain. Indeed, to them, you are nothing more than one who sings love songs with a beautiful voice and plays an instrument well, for they hear your words, but do not put them into practice. When all this comes true, and it surely will, then they will know that a prophet has been among them. They're just kind of listening to Ezekiel speak, but not really paying attention to what he says. They're not heeding his warnings. And God says, the time is coming when I will do exactly what I have said I will do. And then they'll know, Ezekiel, that you were telling the truth, that you truly are my prophet. Now, there's an interesting section here, and I want to draw your attention to this portion of the reading today, because you'll notice similarities to other passages in the Bible, such as the 23rd Psalm, such as John chapter 10, where Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd who cares for the sheep, because here that shepherd imagery, where the leaders are the shepherds, the people are the flock of sheep, is being used throughout this section. But here, God is going to hold the leaders accountable because they are not good shepherds. Then he will describe himself as one who truly is the good shepherd. Let's read some excerpts here. Woe to the shepherds of Israel who only take care of themselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool, and slaughter the choice animals. 
but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You've not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You've ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth and no one searched for or looked for them. I am against the shepherds, God says, and I will hold them accountable for my flock. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so I will look after my sheep, God says. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on days of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines, and in all the settlements of the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. Then they will lie down in good grazing land, and they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. He talks about how each person is going to be judged individually. Each sheep will be judged individually. He describes himself here, as I mentioned, as the good shepherd. And then he says, I'm going to make a new covenant of peace with them and rid the land of wild beasts so that they may live in the desert and sleep in the forests in safety. I will bless them and the places surrounding my hill. I will send down showers in season. There will be showers of blessing. The trees of the field will yield their fruit and the ground will yield its crops. The people will be secure in their land. They will know that I am the Lord when I break the bars of their yoke and rescue them from the hands of those who enslaved them. You, my sheep, the sheep of my pasture are people and I am your God declares the sovereign Lord. Great language about shepherds and sheep and God, of course, being the ultimate good shepherd. We read of Edom's punishment and here, Edom is a term being used really to define not only the nation of Edom, but all those nations who have surrounded the people of God, who have helped in destroying them, who have helped in getting them taken into exile, into Babylonian captivity, who have gloated over the demise of Jerusalem, they are now being punished by God. And he comes once again with severe judgment against them. He even tells his people who are in exile, the scorn they have shown toward you will be returned to them. I am taking care of your enemies, God says. Israel herself is going to be delivered ultimately back to her land and Israel will prosper. The taunts of all the enemies will cease. But I want to draw your attention to page 1125, where God says some things about his holy name. Son of man, when the people of Israel were living in their own land, they defiled it by their conduct and their actions. So I poured out my wrath on them because they had shed blood in the land and because they had defiled it with their idols. I, dis I dispersed them among the nations and they were scattered through the countries. I judged them according to their conduct and their actions. And wherever they went among the nations, they profaned my holy name. For it was said of them, these are the Lord's people, and yet they had to leave his land. I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they had gone. God goes on to say, I'm bringing you home, not because of your goodness, but because of the holiness of my name. My name will not be profaned. He talks about putting a new spirit a spirit in them that will guide them. He talks about giving them a new heart, a heart that's not made of stone, but a heart of flesh because he wants to create for himself this new people with a new covenant in a renewed land so that he can be their God. His name can be worshiped as holy and they will honor him and obey him as a holy God 
He will be their God. They will be his people. He will be their shepherd. They will be the sheep. He will cause them to lie down and find green pasture. He will lead them beside still waters. And all of this imagery comes to a, a, a close here as it all wraps nicely together. Ezekiel is saying there is a good time coming. There is a time of prosperity. Hold on in your time of despair because God has some amazing things to plan for you, some amazing things to put in place. Do you know that the same is true today? No matter how deeply we might despair, God still says, hold on. I want my name to be honored. I want you to glorify me with your life. I want to be your God. I want you to be my people. Isn't it great to be a lamplighter? His word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. I hope you have a blessed day.